void agreements what do we mean by void agreements and what are the different provisions of the indian contract act with related to void agreements now void means something that is not there that is not accepted that is not enforceable in the eyes of law so a void agreement is not enforceable by law it has no legal existence and is inoperative something that you cannot take to the court something for which there is no provision that is something called as void in such a contract rights and duties of the parties cannot be enforced right enforceability something that cannot be enforced is void right that is what we are trying to say so void agreement is not enforceable by law that we need to remember but what are these agreements there are certain things which are expressly declared as void like some things can be void can may, uh, maybe they cannot be void but certain things which are expressly that means if this is the case these are going to be void so what are those agreements so following are the agreements which are declared as void specifically in the indian contract act so number 1 agreement made by incompetent person now who is incompetent person uh, we have already seen this some there is something called as capacity of parties or the persons who are eligible to enter into a contract so there are three things agreements made by incompetent parties the person who are incompetent one if they are of unsound mind somebody who is under the age and somebody who is expressly declared as uh, not qualified to enter into a contract now this we will learn in detail in the video i believe in the class you would have seen or maybe you can see next uh, called capacity of the parties that is uh, dealt with in detail those are the persons who are uh, expressly declared as void then second provision it says agreement made under the mutual mistake as to matter of fact essentials to agreement now this one also you just need to remember there is something called as matter of a uh, fact so if there is a mutual mistake related to the a uh, fact which is essentials to an agreement that is also something called as void this is also dealt with uh, where we are dealing about free consent and we are talking about mistake under mistake there is one category called mutual mistake a uh, mistake of fact and wh when it is mutual right next it says agreement made under mistake of law not in force in india this is also something dealt in free consent but yes something like as we uh, discussed void agreement means something for which there is no provision and something uh, some mistake which is not there a mistake of law which is not force in india the law which is not there in india so that means there is no provision for that and if you commit a mistake as to that law definitely it is going to be null and void right next it is agreement made without consideration under section 25 yes this we have already seen no consideration means no contract uh, uh, contracts without agreements or rather we should say agreements without consideration are null and void so that is also there the next it is agreement the object or consideration of which is unlawful this also we have seen something for which either the object or consideration or both whatever it is if something is on unlawful this also becomes null and void next it is agreement in restraint of marriage agreement in restraint of in restraint of trade and agreement in restraint of legal proceedings these are the things we have uh, uh, just moving forward we will discuss these things in detail but agreement in restraint of trade marriages and proceedings if you are stopping somebody from getting married if you are stopping somebody from carrying on a trade or profession or if you are stopping somebody to go ahead with the legal proceedings that is something void agreement the meaning of which is uncertain like you entered into an agreement which is very much legal but if it is something that is uncertain you are not clarifying what is to be done or what are the things that are supposed to be performed or what are the provisions if if it creates some ambiguity then also it is null and void and what is the section section 29 we are dealing with here okay yeah uh, from here we are starting this uh, yeah 25 is about consideration then 26 deals with restraint of marriage see 23 is uh, the object being lawful then 24 uh, somewhere uh, it is not here we'll uh, look into when 24 comes 25 is consideration 26 is agreement in restraint of marriage 27 is agreement in restraint of trade and then 28 is legal proceedings 29 is agreements of which meaning is uncertain 30 deals with your agreement by way of wager if you're uh, doing a wagering agreement that is also illegal uh, that that is also null and void we should say uh, this wager agreements are also dealt with in detail moving ahead in this video itself and last one agreement contingent on an uncertain future event if there is something called as contingent agreement and if your agreement is contingent upon an uncertain future event and if that event becomes impossible right you're saying that if it rains then we will go ahead with the contract and if it becomes impossible that it will it cannot rain then like which is uh, an very 
odd example i'm giving but imagine that raining is impossible your contract is dependent upon rain and rain becomes impossible then it also will be uh, void because uh, the agreement which was contingent upon certain event now this event is not happening it is impossible so that is section 32 for you agreements contingent to an uncertain future event now uh, point number 12 agreement contingent on an impossible event i believe uh, yes uncertain future event and again if something is certain but still if it becomes uh, impossible that is also there then agree uh, similar not something different but the difference is that if you, if it is upon some future event if it becomes impossible and something that like the event was uncertain but that uncertainty is th there that it becomes impossible now that is void but something that is contingent on something that which, which is impossible from the first day itself that is also void you're saying that i'm saying that you know yeah sorry i'm saying that my event is dependent upon rain and if rain becomes an impossible then the uh, agreement will be void but what if the rain was impossible from the very first day it doesn't rain anymore so that is also void that is the difference between point number 11 and 12 or rather we should see section 32 and 36 agreement to do an impossible act yes if you are promising something which is impossible if i'm saying that you know i will bring moon and stars for you that is something impossible that we are saying so that is also you cannot enforce that is also you cannot take to the court then agreement to do an act which subsequently becomes impossible so here we are dealing with impossibility you have promised like again point number 11 and 12 are talking about an event of which your agreement is dependent either it is impossible from the first day or it becomes impossible in future and uh, point number 13 and 14 are talking about doing something which is impossible from the first day or which becomes impossible subsequently so if it is impossible from the first day yes it is void even if it was possible but now it has become impossible there then also it is uh, void right this is what section 25 talks about this these are your agreement 13 14 points we have seen over here so agreement by incompetent person yes null and void mistake of fact null and void uh, mistake of law not force in india if it is force in india then the provisions are different but if it is not force in india then it is void without consideration void unlawful consideration or object void restraint of marriage trade legal proceedings void meaning is uncertain void wager void impossibility there are one two three four points for impossibility impossibility of contingent event and impossibility of act whether initial impossibility or subsequent impossibility both are null and void right these are your 14 points now section 25 as we said agreement and restraint of uh yeah where it is agreement and restraint of marriage so what do we mean what do we mean what are the provisions with restraint to marriage so this is what we are looking at every agreement and restraint of marriage of any person other than minor is void yes uh, we are looking at like marriage is a fundamental right of any human being so you cannot stop anybody by entering an agreement you cannot enter into an agreement and say that you know this person cannot marry because that is a fundamental right but for a minor that is allowed because uh, again uh, the legal age for getting married is 18 over here so uh, 18 21 depending upon which gender you belong to but depending upon the age if it is a minor then yes your agreement is valid but other than that it's not right and if you're forcing the minor to get married that is again something illegal so you should not get into that offense every person has right to marry and his right cannot be restrained or interfered except of minor until he attains majority that is what is your agreement and restraint of marriages next it is section 27 agreement and restraint of trade now marriage is simple you cannot stop anybody that is how we are trying to say but in trade it gets a little bit complicated how does it get complicated let's try to pay. let's uh, try to look at it every agreement by which any per, uh, anyone is restrain for from exercising a lawful profession trade or business of any kind is to that extent void you cannot stop people from entering into any kind of trade or profession that is the fundamental uh, right again people have to their profession they can choose what they want to do whether it is a trade whether it is a business whether it is a profession whatever it is so if you're stopping somebody from that it is null and void but there are certain conditions the object of section 20c is to encourage free trade and thereby allow every, every person to carry on any lawful trade or profession of his choice at any place yes this is the intention of section 21 where you are, you cannot stop people from carrying on any kind of trade profession or business but there are certain exceptions 
like there are certain situations where you can actually stop people from carrying on trade now what are those uh, exceptions one is sale of goodwill if you are selling your goodwill let's suppose you have a business business has some a uh, business has a brand value that brand value we can say goodwill like let's suppose if, if your uh, net worth is 1 crore but if i sell out your property if i close down your business whatever property you are possessing in your business and if i sell everything the value that i'm going to get is only 50 lakhs so what is uh, then why your value is 1 crore the rest of the 50 lakhs that that there is no physical asset for which that is goodwill because your val net worth is considered as 1 crore because there are certain amount so if you're selling down your business if you're selling your goodwill in that case you cannot carry on a business let's suppose i am i'm running down a business and i'm selling it to you right and after selling the same business after selling the business to you i have like i have sold my goodwill and that like in in the business and by selling the business i'm selling goodwill also and if i'm selling my goodwill to you later on the second day i'm starting the same business next to you what will happen people whether people will go to your business or they will come to my shop what will happen so that is why sometimes what happens practically that you know uh, if i'm selling my business to you i should not be starting my business the next day so there you can st uh, like you can stop me if there is an agreement you can stop me without agreement yes i'm free to do but in case there is an agreement yes you can stop even though uh, stopping somebody from carrying a trade or profession is illegal illegal but in this case it doesn't right that is the way. then similar example agreement between partners again part for partners also that is the same thing like the same partners cannot enter into different business if we two are doing the business and the same business you are carrying on separately you cannot do and if you are leaving my partnership then also you cannot do that is the condition so restriction on existing partner existing partner cannot carry on the same kind of business on an outgoing partner outgoing partner after leaving the business also you cannot do and restriction upon partners on or in anticipation of dissolution of the firm if we are expecting that the firm is going to dissolve that time also we can restrict this condition that we can put this condition for partners also it is there then service agreements for service agreements also it is there like if uh, if you are doing service for me and uh, the same same kind of thing you are doing outside you are carrying on a business and you are compete uh, you are doing business with my competitors that also i can stop you by entering into an agreement by making you enter into an agreement that you cannot do the same business outside you cannot carry on the same activity i can stop you from carrying on your any kind of trade or profession or business uh, if you are in service with me so this is generally included in the service agreement so next time when you're joining any organization just have a look at it or if you are actually doing just look at your uh, appointment letter you will see this service agreement and uh, where people are stopping you from carrying on any trade or business and you would say that you know as per section 27 you cannot stop me from carrying on any trade they can stop you because there is a provision for that right uh, it is one of the exceptions of section 27 next it is trade combination now what is trade combination trade combination is again something like we two you are doing a business i am also doing a business we, we both are doing good but we have like we are facing some uh, downfall that your business is all, also not going the way it should be going and mine is also not going the way it should be going and we are competing to each other we are not able to focus on our business now what do we do we enter into an agreement and we merge our businesses together right and if we merge our businesses together we feel like all the customers will be coming to our shop and we will be sharing the profits instead of fighting with each other let's increase the competition now what will happen now whatever price you were setting i had to follow the same price and i had to compete if i'm increasing my price people will go to your shop if i'm lowering my price they will be coming to my shop now what happened since we have merged together now we two can decide a higher price and we can run down the business so that that is something called as trade combination like some sort of agreements you are entering into and if we are entering into an agreement definitely like i can stop you from carrying on a similar business and you can also stop me from can carrying on similar business that is also there so in that case also you can stop people from carrying on businesses and next it says sole trading agreements uh, sole dealing agreements so now what is sole dealing agreements it is like if uh, we enter into an agreement that you will be selling only my product there also i can stop you like certain distribution networks are there that if i'm selling a product you cannot sell my uh, if you're selling my product if i have a sole dealing agreement with you you cannot sell my competitors products that is also there so this is also where uh, you know you can stop people from carrying on any kind of trade or profession so Uh, generally it is said that you cannot stop anybody from carrying on any trade or profession or business but if these are the conditions if these are the scenarios in these scenarios you can these are like 
uh, five conditions one is sale of goodwill the other one is in case of partnership then service agreements trade combinations and sole dealing agreements in these scenarios you can actually stop people from carrying on businesses or trades why why can we stop because these are practical like logically you need just you just need to think logically don't need to complicate it too much just think it it uh, think it of uh, how can you you know actually practically what would be the scenario if you are allowing somebody if you are like uh, entering into a trade combination and the other person is also doing the similar job then what is the purpose of entering into the combination what is the purpose of uh, being merged into a business like what is the purpose of entire merger of business right so at that time it becomes important to understand that these conditions are practical now section 28 agreements in restraint of legal readings uh, legal uh, proceedings i'm saying trading only sorry according to section 28 two kinds of agreements amount to restraint of legal proceedings and are thus to that extent void agreement restricting enforcement of legal rights and agreements limiting the period of limitation so what is it again we are trying to say two kinds of agreements amount to restraint of legal proceedings we are just trying to define what do we uh, say by stopping somebody from legal proceedings so if you are stopping somebody from going for legal proceedings that is void but what do we mean by legal proceedings that is two kinds of agreements now what are those two agreement restricting enforcement of legal rights you cannot stop anybody from exercising their legal rights if law is giving me a certain right who are you to stop me you cannot make me stop from exercising my legal rights by just making an agreement so that is there and next it says agreements limiting the period of limitation again if i am not enforcing your right but i cannot also limit your uh, period of limitation that is also there so both the scenarios you cannot stop whoever wants to go for legal proceedings they can go you cannot stop like if you are saying that you know if you are fighting with me like let's suppose we are in merger we are we two are doing business and we have a fight now you are asking me for some money and i'm not giving you now i'm stopping you to go for uh, legal proceedings also that is also i cannot do but there are certain exceptions again to section 28 also there are certain exceptions where i can stop you from going for legal proceedings when these are the exceptions first one an agreement between two or more persons to refer to arbitration any dispute which may arise between them is not void arbitration means instead of going to the court now we understand that if you go to the court it will take a lot of time and instead of getting a solution it will be a more problematic situation so what we decide that we will instead of going to a court what we will do we will go to a third party we like both of us we agree that there is a person to whom we can approach and who can do our uh, so we can do the who can do the solution for us that is something called as arbitration so if we are agreeing that in case if there is an issue in the future so instead of going to the court instead of exercising your legal right as per the legal proceedings we can go for arbitration so if there is an agreement for arbitration yes you can stop from going to the court that is there because we have already agreed that we will go for arbitration now you are deciding to go to the court there we can stop legal pro that that is not stopping from legal proceeding that is one of the exceptions next exception again at arbitration only an agreement between two or more persons to refer to arbitration any dispute which has already arise and that is existing dispute is not void the f point uh, first condition was about a dispute which will arise in future we are talking about something that can arise and the second condition we are saying that an ex a dispute which has already arisen something that is already there between us and for that issue we are already in court or maybe somewhere we are doing but now we have decided to go for arbitration that is also allowed next it is when two courts have jurisdiction to try uh, to try a suit an agreement between the parties that the suit should be filed in one of those courts alone and not in the other is valid yes that is also there now what is it like uh, let's suppose if i uh, uh, let's suppose we are in pune and there are two courts one is pune and one in mumbai uh, we we have the option to go to either of the courts either we can go to pune or we can go to mumbai but we decide to go to mumbai now in that scenario you cannot say that i will go to pune because we have already decided so there i can stop you from going to the pune court because we have decided we have agreed we have an agreement to go to the mumbai court and you you cannot say that this is something i'm stopping you from legal proceedings yes i'm not stopping you because this is one of the exceptions of the section 28 right so these are the exceptions these are practical again log you just need to think logical it's not something very complicated right so it is understandable now section 30 agreement by way of wager this we have already seen agreement by way of wager is also 
null and void but what do we mean by agreement by way of wager an agreement between two persons to the effect that if a particular uncertain event happens one party shall pay a certain sum to the other and on uncertain event not happening the other shall pay to the first is known as wagering agreement now this is not the technical definition is wagering agreement but i can give you the real name it is nothing but what we can call it as betting but in case of betting betting what happens is some things happen some things don't happen if i'm saying that you know virat kohli will hit a 6 now if he hits a 6 i will give you 10000 rupees if it doesn't if he doesn't hit a 6 you should give me 10000 rupees this is an example of wagering agreement now what are the conditions it says an agreement between two persons to the effect that if a particular uncertain event happens see the event should be uncertain if the event is uncertain it happens if it happens then one party will pay and if it doesn't happen see it is uncertain means either it will happen or it will not happen so there are two outcomes so if the first outcome if it happens then the first party will pay if it doesn't happen the second party will pay that is what we are trying to say and if this kind of agreement you are entering into this is called wagering agreement and this agreement is null and void this agreement is not enforceable in the court of law that is what we are trying to say so if we are entering into an agreement for virat kohli hitting a 6 and if he hits a 6 now i uh, i'm saying if it he hits a 6 i should be paying you rupees 10000 and if i don't pay you you cannot go to the court and ask the ask me to get it uh, uh, get uh, you paid that is not the scenario that is not happening because uh, as per the indian contract act it is something void there is no provision for this kind of agreement as such right so wagering agreements are also void moving forward yes there are certain exceptions now you would say that if this is there what happens a wagering is basically we are talking about uncertain things and there are a lot of things which are uncertain so one example as such is horse race horse race is allowed you can actually go and bet on horse races so that is not <laughs> something that is not allowed then insurance contracts insurance contracts are also based on certain uncertainty some uncertain future hap event where it hap either it will happen or it will not happen those are the scenarios so there also it is uh, what we can say allowed then share market transactions share market is again based on certain uh, speculation based on certain uncertainty we cannot say whether it will go up or down those are the scenarios either it will go up or down or it will not go anywhere again but something that is uncertain so that is also one of the exceptions and then we are talking about literary competitions sometimes these competitions are allowed uh, organized where this is allowed and then game of skills if it is uncertain but still it requires certain skills like i gave you an example of virat kohli hitting a 6 can he hit 6 randomly i'm saying because i have seen his performance i'm uh, being uh, confident on his skills that is why i'm committing to it so if it is based on certain skills that is also very much allowed you just need to look into it whether it is a horse race whether it is an insurance contract whether it is a share market transaction whether we are talking about literary competitions or game of skills these agreements these are some exceptions to the wagering agreement right now subsequent impossibility we uh, dealt with subsequent impossibility things which become impossible later on they are also void but what do we mean by uh, this uh, subsequent impossibility how does it happen this is a part of section 56 this we will uh, look into when we are, are talking about impossibility of performance there it is dealt with but for now it's just for reference so contracts becomes impossible of performance in the following cases one destruction of subject matter the subject matter like let's suppose we uh, we have an agreement that i uh, that i will buy your car for rupees 1 lakh what if the car itself is destroyed there is an earthquake and the car gets destroyed now what will happen the subject matter itself is destroyed it has it is not there the destruction of subject matter leads to impossibility then non occurrence of the contemplated event if our transaction was dependent upon something and that something doesn't happen that, that something that, that does it occur that is also impossible change of circumstances the scenario itself changed completely that is also something leads to impossibility then death or incapacity of a person to the contract like either one of us like either one of us dies how can we say that this will go ahead so if the parties to the contract become incapable uh, then also uh, their incapacity also leads to 
इम्पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस और सब्सिक्वेंट इम्पॉसिबिलिटी वी शुड से देन गवर्नमेंट और लेजिस्लेटिव इंटरवेंशन वॉट हैपन्स इफ यू आर इंटरवीनिंग गवर्नमेंट इज सेंग दैट यू के नॉट एंटर इन टू यर देर इज अ बी आई डोंट नो वाई डज द बी इज नॉट सपोज टू बी देयर सो इट इज गवर्नमेंट और लेजिस्लेटिव इंटरवेंशन इफ द गवर्नमेंट इज इंटरवीनिंग बिटवीन अस गवर्नमेंट इज सेंग यू के नॉट एंटर इन टू दिस काइंड ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैट ऑल्सो मेक्स इट इम्पॉसिबल and when an act becomes unlawful something we were doing like uh, we enter into a contract of buying and selling a car but the government comes and says selling old cars is something unlawful so if something um, that was lawful as of now it is lawful but later on if it becomes unlawful that also makes it impossible so this is something called as imp- uh, subsequent impossibility and with this we are getting done with our uh, void agreements thank you